Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. Yesterday, we covered the Gibson Epiphone side of things, but today, let's dig into the Fender side of things. And I've got to say, Fender, you guys knocked it out of the park this time. The first one being the American Acoustasonic Stratocaster. Now, they did the Telecaster last year, they overhyped the crap out of them, and they're doing the exact same thing with these Stratocasters. Unfortunately, I never got to try out the Tele, but it appears that they only changed one small setting within these, and it was to make it easier to go from an electric clean to an electric dirty sound. So I think it's about time I get one of these in to see how I feel about them. However, Paul Davids did an amazing review of one of these that was sent to him. And I doubt I'll come to any other conclusions besides him. Basically, he's saying these are great if you need both of these sounds in one guitar. But if you already have a nice Stratocaster and you already have a nice acoustic, it's not going to replace either of those. But it is kind of cool to see them bring it to the Stratocaster shape. Honestly, I would rather see them do it with a Jazzmaster next. And I was a little bit sad that these did not come in exotic tops like the Telecasters did. I'm sure we'll see those released later on in the year. And if we're being honest here, I think this design works better on a Telecaster, and that's probably why they did it there first. Moving on to our next topic, the Ultra Series. I've actually already reviewed quite a few of these things. It's nothing new. They were released kind of in between the last NAM and this NAM. So they're a newcomer to the NAM shows, but nothing brand new in general. These guitars have the noiseless pickups. They're kind of a high performance thing. And according to Andertons, they're selling really well and people enjoy them. Personally, for me, I thought the Telecaster was a great guitar. I thought the Stratocaster was a pretty okay guitar. Did not care for the Jazzmaster, but I have a good deal on a used one if you're interested. And I also still have my Ultra Jazz Bass in Texas T, if you're looking. These are great if you're looking for a guitar that has some modern amenities to them, but they are rather expensive, so you gotta weigh your options between like original collections as well as these things. But our next topic here, this made me so happy to see this. They are reissuing two guitars from the 80s. Let's go ahead and dive into the lead series. So here we go, the two coolest colors right here. You get a neon green lead two and a purple lead three. It appears these guys are going to be made in Mexico and both series are just shy of $600 US. But I've actually reviewed a Fender lead one original during my Trey Tuesday series and that's why I'm particularly excited about this run. They're offering them in purple metallic, sienna sunburst, and an Olympic white finish with Pal Ferro fretboards on each. And the lead twos have single coil pickups instead of humbuckers in a neon green finish, crimson red trans, and black. Wow. These things actually look kind of cool, the black one and the red one. That's what my original lead one was. But it's probably best to go with the neon colors because it's a little bit more out there. Now, my lead one, it was not a fantastic guitar. I'm not quite sure why they decided to reissue these things, but I'm kind of excited they did because it's just kind of a goofy guitar that we'll get to review. All the special switching on these will make things very interesting. And the next model that they brought back with a vengeance is the limited edition HM Strat. HM stands for heavy metal. And apparently these things didn't sell that well in the 80s because everybody's like, hey, just leave this to Charvel and all those other brands. But what makes this one particularly attractive to me is the fact that they've limited production crazily. I've actually heard rumors that there's only going to be 300 made between all the colors. And that's about the only way I could see somebody paying about $1,200 for one of these things, is for the limited edition collectability factor of it. I wouldn't mind getting one of these with a nice maple neck like this though. But it appears these are going to be made in Japan, so I guess that kind of helps the price point a little bit. You gotta let me know what color you guys would choose though. There's flash pink, then there's a bright white. The yellow is super 80s as well, but I kind of fall on this ice blue one as being my favorite. I think the colors jive the best on this one. And then the series I was waiting for. Fender has this tendency to do a limited edition run of guitars throughout the whole year in a series. So two years ago, it was called the Parallel Universe. Last year it was called the Rarity series, but then they did a Made in Mexico series called Alternate Reality. This year they couldn't think of another cool name, so they just did a version 2 of the Parallel Universe series. 
I'm just going to go over these real quick here because I'll probably do a separate video about these. So we have the Parallel Universe Uptown Strat, which is kind of an interesting looking mahogany bodied Strat, kind of mixed with the Telecaster Cabernita. We have the Return of the Maverick. That's kind of a cool freaky thing. A Jazz Strat. I love the Jazz Telly, so I bet I'm going to love that thing. A really cool looking Telly Mahiko. Magico. However, it's pronounced that thing's looking interesting. It seems block inlays are the thing this time. And then they got the return of the troublemaker tellies. So we've got a white Les Paul custom in a Telecaster's body here, as well as a Black Beauty 3 pickup with Bigsby version mixed with the Telecaster. That's kind of cool. And then over here, we have the mixing of the Stratocaster and the Jazzmaster again, but in the opposite configuration. So we've got the Stratocaster pickups within the Jazzmaster body. They've mixed a Jazzmaster body shape with a Firebird. <laughs> I'm definitely looking forward to these things coming out. This one was a huge surprise for me. I started playing guitar during the Guitar Hero era. That's what inspired me to learn. It opened me up to a whole new world of music that I had never heard growing up and Tom Morello is one of my early guitar heroes. So seeing that he gets a signature guitar from Fender, that made me really happy. But then I was immediately disappointed that they didn't put Soul Power on the Soul Power Stratocaster. That's the way they displayed it at NAMM, but when I saw them finally listed, I was immediately disappointed. I get it, they didn't want to put it on there because they didn't want to alienate somebody that didn't care about the Tom Morello affiliation and just liked what the Stratocaster could do. But at the same time, if I'm buying a Tom Morello Strat, I want it to say Soul Power on it. It's like doing the Arm the Homeless one and not putting that on it. <laughs> they are going to give you a decal though to put on it if you want it to say Soul Power. Kind of like what they did with the Jimmy Page Mirror Telecaster. And then the next new signature guitar that they've done is another one for Eric Johnson. This one is called the 1954 Virginia Stratocaster. <laughs> now, once again, this is kind of Guitar Hero era stuff. Eric Johnson, Cliffs of Dover, changes your life. But when I first saw this thing, I was on the phone with my musician's friend representative and I asked him, okay, what's different? Because it just looked like a reissue Stratocaster that I wasn't necessarily interested in documenting or anything. But then I went down to the specs and saw two-piece sassafras body. <laughs> I've never heard of a sassafras body before, so it's just quirky enough to make that guitar work for me. I'm sure there's a really cool story behind this one that we'll have to dive into later. You even have a soft v-neck profile shape and it looks like custom wiring. So I'm looking forward to this stories collection Eric Johnson Strat. They're also doing a George Harrison Rocky Strat that they only made seven of from the custom shop. They had them spinning around in a display at NAMM. They're going to be ridiculously expensive. I would love to review one, but yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> the rest of the signature models just appear to be new colors for old models. So you've got things like the Jim Atkins JA90, which if they're anything like the TC90, these are fantastic guitars, amazing to play. But these guys do have some slight differences. You can check out this video to learn more about that. Jim Root got a new white jazz master. Tony Franklin got the most beautiful bass guitar ever. So they're available in three color sunburst, black, and then this magnificent piece of just beautiful bass. Now, the last time I fell in love with the Fender bass in the Ultra series, I bought it and I fiddled my way around for a review and demo, but oh man, I, I don't think you guys want to see me try to play a fretless bass. And then they did this. So there's kind of a trend in the guitar making community to take your popular guitar body designs and transform them into ukuleles and mandolins. So this time they did the ukes with the Stratocaster, the Telecaster, and the Jazzmaster. And I've got to say, the Jazzmaster is beautiful. Last time Gibson tempted me with the uke hummingbird, but I think this time I'm going to have to cave Defender's pressure. They're also bringing the Broadcaster back for its 70th anniversary. 
Which, if you don't know the story, that was the very first name of the Telecaster, but Gretsch had that for a drum kit. So they said, hey, you gotta take that off. And then there just wasn't any title for a Telecaster for a year. Those are now called the No Casters. And then the Telecaster was born. Then they also released some new amps. There's an LT50, a Mustang GTX. I don't know much about that stuff, but this was beautiful to me. A Princeton Reverb amp. It's gonna retail at $2,300, but it's all point to point wiring. There's no circuit boards or anything like that. So you can choose to go true vintage or you can get one of those modeling amplifiers. And then there's just a whole plethora of custom shop guitars. That one kind of looks like some socks. Then there was the Fabergé Egg Stratocaster. That thing is just jewel encrusted everywhere. It, I mean, it looks okay in my opinion, but I probably would spend my money elsewhere. But man, seeing these things up close in such great lighting definitely allows you to appreciate all the work and detail that went into that thing. Much more than stock photos. And Fender definitely had a bunch of just weird custom shop stuff to draw anyone's attention in. Here you can see a super painted skull one and a double telecaster right here. And then all of these guys coming up here. There's one that's really cool to me that stood out above the rest. That one right there, whatever that thing is, it's freaky and I kind of like it. It's got the racing stripe and it's like a squished down Stratocaster? I don't know. That thing's pretty cool too. But this Jazzmaster type looking thing, it almost looks like it should be called like Nebula Burst. Then you've got another one of those cool Electric 12s here. So yeah, Fender released a bunch of cool stuff. If you're in the market for any of this, I actually get VIP discounts. I am considered a major label artist to the dealer that I buy all my stuff from. So sometimes I can use my discount to help you sponsor an episode that actually costs you less than if you were paying retail price. I can at least save you the amount of sales tax that you would have had to have paid. If you're interested, check the link in the description that will give you all the details that you'll need to know. So which one were you most excited for? Let me know down in the comment section and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.